too big for his bed Nothing seems to fit Those raindrops are falling on my head They keep falling So I just did me some talking to the sun And I said I didn't like the way he got things done Sleeping on the job are falling on my head they keep falling but there's one thing I know the blues they send to me me won't defeat me it won't be long till happiness steps up to greet me a rain soon be turning red cry is not for me cause i'm never gonna stop the rain by complaining because i'm free nothing's worrying me up to greet me the raindrops keep falling on my head but that doesn't mean my eyes will soon be turning red crying's not for me cause I'm never gonna stop the rain by complaining because I'm free Nothing's worrying me I'll never forget that day, Jack. Uh, when Willie Smith hit that home run, I think that's what really got us started, and uh, I just figured the Cubs were going to have a great year. Just how much impetus do you figure that opening day home run by Willie's in the 11th inning did give to the Cubs in the first half? Well, it gave us uh, momentum. It showed us that it was going to be a different year all the way around. It, it looked like it was just going to be our year. Uh, we never won too many ball games like that, and we start off uh, opening day with a great crowd, and uh, the ball players really uh, were excited. I know I was. Well, there's no doubt about it, Ron. The first half of 1969 produced some of the most exciting finishes in the history of Chicago baseball. There's a high fly to center field. Philippe Ballou keeps going back, 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 back. High is off the line. The wind got it. Sandals racing for third. He's going to make it easily. A triple to center field by Sandals. There's a drive right center. That's going to bring Rudolph in. Don Kessinger is streaking for second base, and he'll be there easily. Ground ball between first and second. Look out now. Here comes Stewart. This ball game is all over. Bobby Tolan comes through with a hit. Scoring Stewart, and the Reds have won the ball game. Oh, brother, there she goes. It's all over. Very deep, way back there, all the way to the wall, over everybody's head. Kevner will get a single on that. The ball game is all over. One out. There's a line drive. Left field. Here comes the runner. A break to the third. The left fielder fell down. The ball game is over. Oh, brother, what a day. That's it. Here she goes.
That's well hit. He's the left center. That's way back there. It is caught and dropped by Young. He had it in his glove, and then he wanged into the fence out there, and it jarred the ball out of it. Ferguson Jenkins trying now to send the ball game into extra innings. There is a drive into short left. It is a base hit. The ball game is all over. Trainful dropped one in short left. Jones scores, and the Mets win the ball game four to three. There's a drive left center field. There goes the no hitter. And Jimmy Qualls is on first base for the Cubs. So young Tom Seaver, as the crowd groans and moans his disappointment, has just seen Qualls get a base hit with one out of the ninth inning. He had retired 25 Cubs in a row. There is a liner caught by Beckers. The ball game is all over. A spinning line drive off Clint Denon's bat. Glenn Becker went up in the air, timed the leap perfectly. Here's the replay. Watch this. Ugh. Well, Ernie, there's no way that we can forget most of those great moments. They were really something. Now, of course, we've had several months to kind of think the thing over. And as you look back on it, what do you think happened in that stretch? Well, Jack, I think that uh, we got involved in uh, a tension situation. Each day that we played during the 156 game we were in, leading the league, we were constantly uh, demanded uh, on our time, and I think all of us got a little uh, tensed up, and uh, that got us in September. We just uh, got a little bit worn out, and uh, of course we lost a pennant. There is such a thing as pennant fever. Well, yes, too. That was uh, pennant fever. Each day, you know, and that uh, you have to win, and everybody's shooting to beat you, and uh, you have to play a good game, and you have to win, and it certainly created uh, a lot of tension for the ball club, and. Uh, it got us in the latter part of the season. Of course, there was one string of reverses in September we'll never forget. There's a well hit ball. Look out. That's gone. Way back there, all the way out on Waveland Avenue, or rather on Sheffield Avenue, over the right field wall. That is a home run, and we have a brand new ball game at Wrigley Field. Brown ball. Bouncing out to Kess. Oh, no. Kessinger overruns the ball, and Alou keeps coming in. John Kessinger, who a moment ago made a sensational diving stop, has just overrun a ball. There's a base hit to right. Hagee rounds third. Yeti Yost waves him in. The throw in. He is saved at the plate. And Hundley is really hollering at Davidson. Center. Balls in, base hit. Two runs across. The Mets go out in front on Boswell. Base hit. There is a line drive base hit in the center field. One run will score. Two runs have scored. The throw to third and here, safe all around. I hope I can get a single to put us in first place now. I, 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 you know, I didn't realize it was a single that knocked him out, but I, uh, I hope that I can do better on this side now instead of against him. And of course, you've always averaged about 18 home runs a year for the Philadelphia Phillies during a full season. You had 16 last year in spite of an injury. So I have to think you've got a lot of great years of baseball in you, John. I'm looking forward to play 162 games, to tell you the truth, and maybe a few more in that playoff than in the World Series. So I'm looking forward to a good year. John, what is your reaction to playing in the same outfield with Billy Williams? Well, I feel good. Bill, Billy's a fine ball player, and uh, I'm looking forward to play with him every day. And of course, I played the last 10 years against him, and uh, it's always a pleasure to play with somebody that's so outstanding as Billy Williams. For sheer emotion, few moments in 1969 have rivaled the response to Billy Williams Day on June 29th, the day Williams played in his 896th consecutive game against the Cardinals to break Stan Musial's National League record. You know, Billy, it just occurred to me that you and Ernie Banks could both hit that milestone you're after on the same day. You could hit your 1,000th game 
and Ernie could get his 500th home run in the same ball game. Well, this could have happened, Jack, and I, I certainly hope so. The champagne we had left over from last year, we finally wound up drinking. This would be a big day for us. Billy, you found a home in left field, it looks like, uh, for the Chicago Cubs, although you played every outfield position. And, of course, speaking of the Cubs outfield, Jimmy Hickman had a great, great year. How do you account for that fine finish he had in 69? Well, Jimmy, uh, if it hadn't been for Hickman last year, I think we would wind up for, uh, in fourth place. Because Jimmy, he did a tremendous job for us, and I think uh, all the ball players on our ball club uh, take their hats off of Jim Hickman. Well, he'll fall back to right field. Committee going way back to this, back, back. Can't handle it, it's off the line. Jimmy Hickman is going to take the turn. He's challenging the arm of Prometti. He's going to go to third. He is safe. I run just as hard as anybody else. Maybe I don't get there quite as fast, but uh, I do uh, have that stride, and, and I guess that'll be with me the rest of my career. I imagine it means a lot, too, to an outfielder to know he's got Kessinger and Beckert guarding short and second. That's right, Jack. With a couple of guys like that, you know, not too many balls are going to get through the infield. And, uh, of course, your outfielders have to back up no matter whether they catch the ball or not. But it, it's a little extra, you know. You know these guys are there, and they're going to get to that ball. I think, that, uh, Jack, the main thing is, is a matter of, as all sports are, is a matter of timing. And uh, different fellows have different ways of, of timing. Now, you have to take Don. Now, beginning in 1965, season, they had Roberto Pena, who is... Uh, Probably four seven or five seven or what? You know he's so short, and then Don's being so rangy and tall. But I think it's just a matter of experience and working together day in and day out. You, you get in habits. Uh, try to get in good habits. Last September we were in a few bad habits. Where does Glenn like that ball on the second when he's the pivot man? I tell you, Glenn turns a double play real well, Jack, and it's uh, it's not too much trouble. You just get it over there near the base, and he does a good job. You kind of got the impression uh, because of his hitting that Ernie's fielding might sometimes be underestimated. I think uh, Ernie's, uh, the only uh, thing about Ernie's, uh, his legs might be slowing up a little bit. Might not be covering the ground, but I guarantee every ball that Ernie gets to, he catches. And great he's, hands, he's the mean. greatest in the ball in the dirt. In fact, it gets so when I throw a ball in the dirt or, or catch throws a ball in the dirt, I head for the dugout. I know Ernie <laughs> has it. Hey, hey, holy mackerel, no doubt about it. The Cubs are on their way. Hey, hey! <laughs> Let's do it again here. Cue it up a little bit. Put it back. Action. Hey, hey, holy mackerel, no doubt about it. The Cubs are on their way. Hey, 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 come on out. Leo DeRocher's in his fifth year as manager of the Chicago Cubs. They finished higher last year than they have at any other time since 1945, 92 wins. Object, obviously, 100 wins this year. That should win the pennant, Leo. Sure right, Jack. I hope we can do uh, that or a little better. Leo, before we get any farther into this interview, I want the record to show that I did not, repeat, did not give that alleged quote to the writer of a National Magazine article quoting me as having hammered you pretty good. I just want the record to show that. Well, Jack, uh, I didn't read the article, and uh, that's good enough for me. Uh, I never did say that you did say it, and that's good enough for me when you say that you didn't. So uh, I don't read that trash anyway, so let's go on with our baseball interview, Jack. All right. The Cubs' problem, Leo, this year is pretty well known, I think, to everybody by now. At least anybody you talk to says the problem, center field and pitching. Well, I think center field, Jack, will be a bigger problem than pitching, really. Uh, although uh, last year I only had two. Mm -hmm. Where I had, I think, Qualls and Phillips and Young, three. And uh, it was a little different when Phillips had gone and left me with two. This year I've got seven, Jack, that uh, look pretty good to me. And, uh, of course, Hickman. Now that he's not going to be in right field, he's going to be a candidate for center field. And somebody's going to have to show me that he can't play it before I put anybody else there. Boots Day, being a left-hand hitter, is a real good-looking ball boy. He can run, he can throw, uh, he, can, he can cover a lot of ground, he's got good range. So I'm not too worried about center field with uh, fellows like Young and the Cleo James, who we drafted from the Spokane Club. We had 326 in the Coast League. 
And pitching? Between Gura and Coburn and Decker. I think we're going to be, uh, if I can't find two pitchers, Jack, out of uh, seven or eight that I know of, a young kids, then we're not trying. How about the bullpen? Well, the bullpen with Regan and Abernathy, I'm going to give Abernathy a lot more work than I did last year, Jack. I didn't give him anywhere near enough. Mm -hmm. I put all my eggs in Regan's basket, and, and I tired him out. Well, now, of course, the question that everybody asks you all the time is, what happened in 1969? I'm terribly disappointed that we didn't go all the way, that we didn't win it. The players are disappointed that we couldn't win it for Mr. Wrigley and Mr. Holland and for all our fans. And But that's like yesterday's newspaper. That's dead. We have a new outlook for 1970. We think we've got a better ball club, at least I do, and I know the players have forgotten all about it, their de desire. Determination is uh, is fine. Uh, they have great spirit in the camp this spring. And as you just pointed out, we had a good year. We didn't win it, and the Mets won it. They beat everybody. They were entitled to win it. Mm -hmm. We uh, didn't play well at all. And uh, there's no excuses for it or no alibis. We gave it all we had, but it wasn't good enough. I worked real hard this past winter to uh, build myself up and prepare for this uh, coming season. And I gained about 20 pounds after the season was over. What weight are you right now? Right now I'm at 190, and I hope I can stay that way for uh, some time, at least to August or so. <laughs> well, now, of course, Fergie Jenkins had a great 20-game uh, season again this past year. How do you figure Fergie's potential for 1970? Well, I think Fergie should win at least 30 games or so. <laughs> uh, well, I'm trying to get in best possible shape. This is where it starts. Uh, stay healthy uh, during spring training get into good shape, the pitches come around, and then carry it on during the season, especially during the season, because uh, I know once last year I got hit with a line drive. Uh -huh. uh, it didn't take me out of action for very long, but this is the important thing, to stay healthy the whole year. What would you say is the difference, the basic difference, Fergie, between, we'll say, your pitching repertoire and that of Bill Hands? I think basically Bill and I throw the same. I throw more curveballs than uh, probably Bill does. Uh, but I think Bill is more of a slider fastball pitcher. Mm -hmm. uh, it depends on certain situations, certain hitters, certain ball clubs. Mm -hmm. But uh, he's got uh, real good control of his three pitches, and uh, he did real fine last year. Even in the clutch, he did uh, a great super job. Uh, this will be my 12th season in pro ball, and I think it's taken me pretty near all of them to get so I could throw the ball where I want it to. I, I think I was the typical young pitcher that could throw pretty hard and didn't know where it was going, and it just takes a uh, number of years to to acquire the, to have the ability to uh, throw the ball where you want to. Of course, you and Kenny Holtzman, I know, are real good friends. What was going through your mind when Kenny got that no-hitter last year against Atlanta? Well, I think everybody was pretty darn excited. I know the blood was just racing through me like crazy. I was sitting down in the bullpen, and we were all standing up and uh, watching, and, and we were really anxious when he was pitching against Henry Aaron there, and then uh, he finally got Aaron to hit a 3-2 pitch to Becker and the final out. Ball three, strike two. Here it goes. Ground ball. Becker up with it. The throw to Banks. It's a no-hitter! It's a no-hitter for Kenny Holtzman! Look at this! Oh, brother! It's a no-hitter for Kenny Holtzman! Boy, and the fans are streaming onto the field. The Andy Frayn ushers and the police are having a terrible time trying to contain them. Well, Kenny, what do you best recall about that no-hitter? Well, Jack, uh, there's a lot of things I recall. I, I can remember the first inning of the game. I remember Ronnie uh, hitting uh, Phil Necro's pitch for a three-run homer, which actually won the game. Uh, I can remember some great plays by Glenn Beckert in the field. I can also remember a fly ball hit by... Henry Aaron in the seventh inning, which seemed like a certain home run, but which later Billy Williams made a great catch on. Well hit, way back, 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 back. Hey, hey! Look at Becker make this play. Beautiful. Moving over to his left, plugged the hole, threw off balance to Banks, and still got his man. That's well hit. And there, I believe, goes the no-hitter. Caught! Caught by Williams! One and two. There is a high fly. Short center. Kessinger out. Young in. And it is... 
Don Kessinger who catches the ball. There's a ground ball bouncing high. Shadow has it. Should get his man over the bank. There's number two in the ninth. Ball three, strike two. Here it goes. Ground ball. Back it up with it. The throw to bank. It's a no hitter. It's a no hitter for Kenny Hulkman. Well, actually, from a, a perfectionist point of view, you should go out and try and pitch a no-hitter every game. You're trying to get each guy out. Uh, you realize that the odds against that are really <laughs> are pretty great, but uh, really a pitcher should go out there with the idea of trying to pitch a no-hitter. Uh, you're trying to get each man out. You're trying to win the game, prevent the other team from scoring, and uh, that's just the uh, ultimate in what a perfectly pitched game would be. Now, what kind of a celebration do you look for when Ernie hits that 500th home run? Well, I think I'm going to celebrate along with the rest of the people in Chicago uh, uh, as far as I'm, I, I can't think of anybody I admire more than Ernie Banks, and I know the rest of the players feel that way, and uh, I know that that 500th home run will be a great thing for Ernie, and uh, I think that all the players will share his excitement. Maybe you'll hit it for you that day. I hope so. <laughs> well hit. Way back. Line drive. It is a home run for Ernie Banks. Well, Ernie, here we go with another great year for Ernie Banks, I'm sure. And of course, you need only three home runs to get that number 500. Now, last year, you got two homers on opening day. If you were to uh, kind of make a little educated guess, when do you think you'll get that 500th home run? Well, I would say uh, I'm looking forward to it on April 14th in the friendly confines of beautiful Wrigley Field. <laughs> <laughs> in other words, you figure, let's see, we open with Philadelphia and then go to Montreal before the home opener. You figure you'll get a couple before we uh, come home for the home opener on the 14th. Yes, I hope so, because it's going to be a little cool in uh, Philadelphia and Montreal and uh, it's going to take a little while to get loosened up. But when I get back to the friendly <laughs> confines, I'll be ready to go. When, uh, when did you hit number one and off whom? Do you remember? Well, it was off of Jerry Staley uh, of the St. Louis Cardinals, and uh, it was in September of, I believe it was September 20th of 1953, and it certainly uh, was a tremendous thrill. I could almost uh, recite this for you, but I have to ask you your prediction for 1970. Well, the Cubs will go and glow in 7-0. We're not going to make promises for action and not keep those promises. Go and glow in 7-0. <laughs> okay, Ernie, I'm with you. Ron, this winter you were quoted at one luncheon as saying you're going to be mean this year. What did you mean by that? Well, I meant that uh, last year, Jack, towards the end of the season, uh, we had a tough go. Uh, it wasn't that we didn't go out there and try to win, uh, but I felt that uh, we felt that we were the best ball club and we were going to win it, and yet the, the Mets and other ball clubs came at us very aggressive. Uh, they went into second base uh, very hard. They went out of their way to try to knock Kessinger down or Becker down. Uh, they started throwing baseballs at us, and we just sat back and took it. Uh, I think that we should have came right back and did the same thing, and that's what I meant about starting on opening day and just being a little meaner, because when it really comes down to the nitty-gritty, nobody cares, and uh, you've got to start thinking about yourself, Jack, and uh, so when you're out across those lines, uh, nobody can be your friend. You've got to be mean. Hey, hey, holy mackerel, no doubt about it. Today. They're gonna feel today. Come what may, the Cubs are gonna win today. Hey, hey, holy mackerel, no doubt about it. The Cubs are on their way. They got the hustle, they got the muscle, the 
Chicago Cubs have come to play. The Chicago Cubs are.